This is FYI on your TV brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I have got Andrew Dunn with me here. You're with the Leeds Grenville and Lanark District Health Unit. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, you're most welcome. It is summertime and the mosquitoes are rampant right now too and we're going to talk about West Nile virus. So can Alrighty. you tell the folks what West Nile virus is? Well, West Nile virus is a, well, it's a virus, obviously. Uh, it's a virus that can, can be spread by and, and is spread by the bite of infected mosquitoes. Um, we don't have a lot of it in the area, but it has been around in Ontario. And um, we, uh, we keep an eye out for it now every year. And uh, we do uh, testing and monitoring for them, which is uh, part of why we're, we're talking today. But it's a, it's a virus. It, most people who, uh, who pick this up probably wouldn't even know that they have anything. Um, the problem with West, with West Nile virus is uh, sometimes the, uh, sometimes the symptoms can be a little bit more serious um, and that's what we're really out to prevent. Uh, that's the ones that send people to the hospital and uh, uh, quite often more of a, uh, a systemic uh, um, meningitis uh, type, of, type of illness, but that's, uh, that's quite rare. But uh, um, that can be what happens, so again, that's why we take it seriously. That's right, and you said the word prevent too, so how can we prevent this? Um, we can prevent it uh, by numerous different ways. Uh, we can prevent it by keeping our mosquitoes under control, that is trying to prevent uh, where they breed, uh, so it prevents our exposure to them. Uh, a lot of it is personal protection. Uh, if you're going out at a time of day when there's a lot of mosquitoes, take personal prevention measures, um, wear clothing that's uh, long sleeve, long pants. I know that's hard to do when the weather's <laughs> so hot, but uh, you know, something light, uh, something loose, some, so the mosquitoes can't bite through it. Um, and uh, wear a hat uh, and also uh, wear some insect repellent uh, that, that contains DEET. Uh, it's very effective. Um, mosquitoes are most active between the uh, dusk to dawn uh, time. So, uh, you know, try not to go out in, in that time period if you want to avoid mosquitoes. Uh, but if you are, uh, you know, take some protection that, uh, that you uh, don't allow yourself to be bitten. Okay, now I did it myself the other day. I went out and I bought some mosquito repellent. Mm -hmm. What should I be looking at? You said the word DEET, but what should I be w w looking at? Uh, that's basically <coughs> it. Uh, you want to buy something that's got uh, a DEET as, a, as an active ingredient because that's, that's what keeps the mosquitoes at bay. Okay, okay, because there's, there's all sorts of different, there's uh, uh, with DEET, without DEET, uh, What's the uh, sensitive? They're sensitive. There's yeah, all sorts of different yeah, things. Yeah, we uh, we we <coughs> really promote the DEET. Mm -hmm. DEET is a uh, it's a tried and true uh, insect repellent and effective against mosquitoes. Um, uh, I can't say the other ones don't work, but we know that DEET does work. So uh, that's kind of what we uh, what we promote. Not a, any particular brand, but something that has a, an active ingredient of DEET in it. And I like you, that you said that. <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> to wear loose clothing too, because they can bite through something. Yeah, if you wear, uh, <coughs> you know, if you're just wearing a tight uh, fitting uh, t-shirt or something, everybody knows you can yes. get a mosquito bite through that. So something that's loose, uh, so that when the mosquitoes land on it, they, you know, they're not millimeters away from going through that into yes, the skin. Yeah, so, yeah. so something, uh, something loose, and yeah. that's of course makes it a little bit cooler too. Right now, what can a homeowner do? Because sometimes you visit people and they, they seem to have more mosquitoes at their house than maybe at your house, but what can a homeowner do? Well, the, um, the mosquitoes that we're most concerned about, the ones that harbor or uh, will be more uh, apt to have West Nile virus, uh, they're, it's not, they're, we consider them urban mosquitoes, not in the sense of, you know, okay. mosquitoes in the hood type thing, but <laughs> mosquitoes that, that live, <clears throat> they don't live in natural bodies of water, ponds, rivers, streams. They like to live in small containers of water, uh, small pools of water. So, so buckets and pails that have rainwater mm. in them, old tires that have water in them, um, stagnant uh, stagnant swimming pools, kids swimming pools, uh, e even bird feeders that haven't been washed right. out. Uh, right. Sometimes if you take a close look at those, you can see lots of little mosquito larvae swimming around in them. So 
Um, we want to try to uh, prevent that. So turn pails over, empty things out, wash, uh, replenish your bird feeder. Um, just try not to have those sort of things around because that's, that's where the mosquitoes breed. And the mosquitoes that bite you on your own property, they don't have a very long range. So it's quite likely the mosquitoes that are biting you were uh, were hatched out of water right on your own okay. property. So um, it's a really good idea to try to keep those little standing bodies of water um, free and clear of, of, uh, of um, you know, tip all those things out, tip things over. Don't, don't let that water accumulate on your property. Right, okay. Now what is the Mosquito Surveillance Program? What is that? So the Mosquito Surveillance Program, um, I can't remember when West Nile first appeared on the scene. I think it was way back in, when, probably around 2002. Um, but since that time, the province has asked health units to monitor uh, our mosquito populations. So since that time, from approximately end of June till into September, um, health units uh, set up mosquito traps. Um, they're traps that are designed to attract mosquitoes and oh, we set them up overnight uh, every other week at various locations throughout the health, uh, health department region. Um, and we essentially attract mosquitoes in, they're collected, they're sent away, uh, each breed, each species is identified and they're also tested for West Nile virus. Um, and we've been doing that for a long time and we continue to do it. Um, it tells us two things. It tells us how many mosquitoes we have, the different types of mosquitoes that we have, um, and also if any of those mosquitoes are carrying uh, West Nile virus. Okay. So um, it's, it's not only important from a West Nile virus standpoint, but as climate changes, and we get warmer, um, things can live longer, uh, over winter longer. So uh, it also gives us an idea of whether or not we have new types of mosquitoes uh, that are coming into our area because uh, different types of mosquitoes uh, can harbor different types of, uh, types right. of uh, diseases. So uh, mosquitoes in the deep south harbor different types of illnesses, uh, and bacteria, viruses that, that we have here. So. It's, uh, it's kind of a multi-pronged uh, approach to, uh, to dealing with the illness. Okay. okay. We think of it mostly for our West Nile virus purposes though. Oh, okay, all right. Now, I, what I'm hearing now, for, for, for what we can do as individuals to help ourselves, wear loose clothing, wear uh, um, insect repellent with DEET in it, mm -hmm. and in terms of your own property, yeah. try and keep uh, anything that has the accumulation of water away yes so that's what we can do yeah ex absolutely okay. okay all right now if how do you get diagnosed with West Nile virus do you just start not feeling well do you see a doctor do you call the health unit how does well well like I said most uh, well the health unit we we aren't frontline medicine mm -hmm. so um, if anybody called us to say they think they have West Nile virus the first thing we're gonna say is is go see your health care practitioner okay. obviously um, but um, like I said, uh, the large, large majority of people who would ever get mm -hmm. West Nile virus aren't going to feel Don't much more than aches, pains, and a fever, which uh, aren't going to send you to, to the hospital. Uh, when people are starting to get uh, more serious symptoms, uh, that's when obviously they go to, uh, you know, severe headaches, stiff neck, um, those sort of symptoms. They're the symptoms that would that you know aren't normal for you, right. they're typically going to send you to to the hospital anyway. Um, and, and our hospitals are in tune with with doing testing for for these types of things. Uh, Thirty years ago, twenty years ago, they wouldn't have thought of testing for it, but now it's kind of one of the illnesses that they uh, that they will check for. Okay. Okay. Now, how long have you been with the health unit? Uh, I will have been there twenty. 24 years this July. 24 years. End of July. Because uh, we were talking before we started taping too that this is your first time here on FYI, but it's not your first time working with, uh, well, it was uh, before we were called your TV Smith Falls. Mm -hmm. Further down the road in the in the Brockville Mall, Brockville Street Mall, but yes. you did an interview back then too. Yes, did way, way back. It was, uh, I think, I th I think it was my first interview period, uh, radio <laughs> or TV, and uh, it was on norovirus. <laughs> way back then. Way back, leading up to Christmas. But, um, 
But, uh, and here you are now. <laughs> and here I am now. Um, the other thing that I, I just want to mention uh, with regards to, to West Nile virus is, uh, it, I, I mentioned it's a multi-pronged approach. Right. So um, we, we work with our municipalities too. Um, so our municipalities, uh, we have our roads crew at all our municipalities and they're, they're the ones that make sure culverts are clean. Um, so that water drains away right. and there's a lot of municipal property uh, and uh, so they work hard at keeping catch basins clean and water moving where it should be be moving um, we mentioned uh, you know we we rely on homeowners to keep their own properties clear if we ever run into any kind of abnormal situations where somebody's yard really does need to be looked after like lots of standing water um, sometimes sometimes municipalities will get complaints about that um, uh, through their property standards right. so uh, they, they will get involved in, in uh, uh, promoting people keeping their yards clean and, and free of mosquito breeding uh, uh, conditions so it very much is a, a multi-pronged approach the, from the individual level to the, the health unit obviously has our role, uh, municipalities have their role and uh, you know property owners have their role. It so. really is a community. Yeah, it yeah. It takes a community. Yeah, that's right. brings up the public into public health type that, of thing. That's right, that's <laughs> right, that's right. Now how do you get more information? How do they get a hold of you or? or? Uh, we are, these days prob uh, probably the best bet is always to check out our website which mm -hmm. is uh, www.healthunit.org so healthunit.org um, you can uh, once you're on the website uh, you can uh, select all our, our services and programs uh, all the information about uh, insect bites is under a program called healthy environments uh, so uh, you can uh, you can find it there and I, I believe there's also always a, a search option if you'd want to just go straight to it. Um, um, if people have questions that they want to put to the health unit they can always call the health unit uh, too. Uh, phone numbers, well we have multiple phone numbers, they're all on the website. But uh, And a Facebook page, I find you on Facebook too. Yeah, 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 great yeah we, have, uh, we have, uh, we're quite active on Facebook, all this multi, multi, multimedia uh, that we're into now. That's right, that's right. Now where, what office do you usually work out of? I work here in, uh, in Smith Falls. You're in the Smith that's, Falls office. Uh, yeah, um, and uh, that, that's where I've spent most of my time. So. Uh, most of my time working in the uh, Lanark County end of, uh, of the Health Unit region. Excellent. Well, we thank you for everything you do to help keep us safe and uh, keep us healthy as well, too. So, oh, you're, 27 you're, years? Tw 24 years. 24 years. 24 years. 24. 24 years. Good yeah. for you. Good for yeah, you. Yeah, it'll be 27 before long, I'm sure. Yeah, it does go <laughs> the, by fast. Every year passes by a little bit quicker. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? It does, <laughs> for sure, for sure. Andrew Dunn, Public Health Inspector with our Leeds, Grenville, and Lanark District Health Unit. Thank you for joining us today and trying to keep us safe. It takes community. Well, thank you for having us in.